before we take a look at this week's picks, we got to look at the past and look at la- last week. And as you can see, week five, I have come from back. That's right, your friend, f- to all the degenerate gambles, gamblers out there, has come back with a vengeance, going three and one in week five. Only team that didn't win for me, I picked against my DC Defenders, America's team, and they somehow with the change of quarterback and defense played well, they won against the St. Louis Battlehawks. So I got everything right. And if I didn't pay pick against America's team, I'd have been four and zero. But I'm back at it, three and one with some upsets in there. We are right on point, and now that's the halfway point. So now let's go to the second half of the season. And maybe I'll just go 4-0, 4-0, 4-0, 4-0, and 4-0 the rest of the way. Would you like that? Would you like that, you degenerate gamblers out there? I know you would. All right, on to our first game of the week. This Houston Roughnecks against the New York Guardians. Houston traveling to New York. New York is back, thanks to Luis Perez. They're playing well. I don't necessarily think that they are one of the more dominant teams just yet. They are playing well. They're becoming more solid. But you're going against the Houston Roughnecks and P.J. Walker, Cam Phillips, and a great defense. I am not picking against the Houston Roughnecks. Yes, they're traveling to New York. Yes, maybe they might not be used to being in the cold or something like that. That could play a factor. Could the New York Guardians pick an upset? I mean, Houston was a little shaky against Seattle. Your friend is not the one. That's going to pick against the Houston Roughnecks. No, no, no. I think they'll still they'll keep putting those big points up, 32 points. Even though I really like New York Guardians defense, I'm not sure about the New York Guardians offense. And I am high on the Houston defense shutting down the New York Guardians offense. So I'm taking Houston Roughnecks 32, New York Guardians 14 at New York, yes. Weather might play a factor. It's slow down Houston. I I can't pick against Houston yet, though. It wouldn't. I wouldn't be stunned if there was an upset there. But you can't go and pick against the reigning MVP and the Houston Roughnecks, who are just dominating everywhere. Next up, our last, our other Saturday game: St. Louis BattleHawks at Tampa Bay Vipers. Vipers playing much better. Really surprised at how poorly the Battlehawks played against DC. I was really surprised. They just couldn't get anything going. Uh, DC had a block punt that played a big factor in the game. I mean, it was a close game. It was a close battle. Really surprised that the Battlehawks just offense could not get going. I'm feeling like Tampa Bay Vipers, even though they almost did a huge shootout with LA going back and forth. I mean, we're talking Taylor Cornelius. We're not talking BJ Daniels or a Cardell Jones who didn't play last week. But you know what I'm saying? Like some big name quarterback doing it for Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay has been playing well. I'm going with the upset. I think Tampa Bay is who we thought they were. But they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. At the beginning of the season. I think Tampa Bay has come back. I think at home, FS2, which uh, those ratings aren't going to be that great. Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern. I think they can take down the Battlehawks, and Battlehawks lose two in a row. I was just really surprised. I feel like right now, offensively, defensively, I mean, defensively, Tampa gave up a lot of points. There's no question about it. Offensively, I think Tampa Bay Vipers are better than D.C. Defenders. So I have a feeling the Battlehawks could go down. They're not playing at home, which is a big thing for them, clearly with the attendance, but I'm picking Tampa Bay Vipers with the upset of the St. Louis Battlehawks, and Battlehawks lose two in a row. Dallas Renegades at DC Defenders. Hey, as long as Philip Nelson plays, uh, I'm not really sure I get the whole like, oh, we were going to play Cardell for one series and then bench him. You heard Pep Hamilton say earlier on the show or say that he this was all planned all along. The D.C. Defenders offense, I mean, they just ran the ball, ran the ball, ran the ball and played defense to win the game. They squeak it out. They weren't lighting anybody up offensively. Tyree Jackson didn't catch me as one somebody that was going to launch it downfield a bunch of times. 
the way Cardell Jones goes, but I, I'm not feeling Philip Nelson at all on offense. Yes, now Hal Mummy is out. They have a new offensive coordinator. Is that going to make a big difference? I don't think so because Landry Jones was doing fine when he was the quarterback. I, no one sold on, on Philip Nelson, and I'm not sold on Philip Nelson in this game either. But it's not going to be a high-scoring affair. Even with the change of offensive coordinator, I'm just not excited about Philip Nelson. Now, if you get Eric Dundry in, I mean, if you think about, you know, Brandon Silver's getting benched and then B.J. Daniels coming in and giving a spark. I wouldn't necessarily say Tyree Jackson was a spark for D.C., but it did. They win, but it wasn't an offensive explosion kind of thing. Eric Dungy would be the one person that I would say, hmm, maybe I might change, have a change of heart offensively if Eric Dungy came in, in. But I'm still thinking they're going to stick with Philip Nelson at quarterback. So I'm going Dallas Renegades 12. America's team wins again, gets 18. I, I'm not picking against them this time. I learned my lesson, folks. Finally, LA Wildcats, Seattle Dragons. Really like B.J. Daniels as the quarterback, but I also really like Josh Johnson in this instance. Josh Johnson played really well against Tampa Bay. Lighten it up. He's the leader. He potentially could make a run in the second half as MVP, in my opinion. But B.J. Daniels played well for Seattle this week. Seattle could have won that game against Houston, the best team in the league. They look like a team to beat with B.J. Daniels. I'm going with the upset in Seattle. The Dragons take down the L.A. Wildcats. L.A. Wildcats haven't traveled very well. Seattle playing in Seattle, that home field cooking makes a difference for some of these teams. I think it will be that with B.J. Daniels playing well. L.A. having to travel to Seattle. It's the late game on Sunday, 4 p.m., Pacific time, which is 7 p.m. Eastern or something like that. You do the math. LA Wildcats will put up points. I don't think they're going to put up enough points against Seattle. They have a decent defense. So I'm going LA Wildcats 24, BJ Daniels, and Seattle Dragons 28.